Hello students, hope you have gone through all the previous videos and done all assignments given. If not, complete it and then you can take up the next chapter that is study of compounds. So in this video you are going to study about various compounds. The first one is hydrogen chloride gas and hydrochloric acid. Next we have ammonia, nitric acid and sulfuric acid. So you will be learning in detail about these four compounds. First we will study about hydrogen chloride gas. Discovery. Glauber in 1648 prepared hydrogen chloride gas from rock salt and concentrated sulfuric acid. Joseph Priestley in 1772 prepared the gas from sea salt and named it marine acid. Sea salt is sodium chloride. Loiser later named it muriatic acid. Davy in 1810 gave the name hydrogen chloride. So you have to remember the different names of hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid. Marine acid, muriatic acid and hydrogen chloride gas. An occurrence. Hydrogen chloride gas occurs in free state in volcanic gases and as hydrochloric acid in gastric juices of mammals. Now hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid you have already studied in the second chapter chemical bonding. It is a polar covalent compound that is the bond between hydrogen and chlorine formed as polar covalent bond because of the difference in electronegativity of hydrogen and chlorine. Electronegativity of hydrogen is 2.1 and that of chlorine is 3. So because of the difference in the electronegativity, the bond formed between them is a polar covalent bond. There is no need for you to remember this numerical values. It is only given as a reference. The next is preparation of hydrogen chloride gas. General method by direct combination or it is also called as synthesis. Moist hydrogen gas combines with chlorine in the presence of diffuse sunlight. Two factors or two conditions. It should be a moist gas, moist hydrogen gas and it should be a diffuse sunlight. These are the conditions required for the reaction. So hydrogen combines with chlorine to form hydrogen chloride gas. The formula of hydrogen chloride gas and hydrochloric acid is the same, HCl. But when you write it hydrogen chloride gas, you have to mention G here in the bracket. Now, in case if you are not using diffuse sunlight, if it's a direct sunlight, it can lead to an explosion. Explosion, direct sunlight. And if there is no sunlight, it is dark, then the reaction is negligible in the dark. And moisture acts as a catalyst in this reaction. Another method of preparing hydrogen chloride gas is by the reaction of metallic chloride with concentrated sulfuric acid. Metallic chloride can be any metallic chloride. Here, sodium chloride is taken as an example. Sodium chloride combines with concentrated sulfuric acid and when it is heated around 200 degrees, below 200 degrees Celsius, sodium bisulfate or sodium hydrogen sulfate and hydrogen chloride gas is given out. This is another method of preparing hydrogen chloride gas. Then coming to the very important method, laboratory method from sodium chloride and concentrated sulfuric acid only. Here only sodium chloride is used, not any other metallic chloride and only concentrated sulfuric acid. Look at the diagram. You can see a round bottom flask, fit as a two hole rubber cock and through one hole is a thistle funnel, through the other hole is a delivery tube. The delivery tube is connected to a washer bottle A which contains concentrated sulfuric acid. Another delivery tube is connected to a gas jar where the gas is collected. Now these precautions should be taken. The thistle funnel, stem of the thistle funnel should be dipped in the acid. Sodium chloride in the round bottom plus and concentrated sulfuric acid is added to the thistle funnel and see the stem of the thistle funnel is dipped in the acid or the gas can escape through the thistle funnel. And then it is, the gas formed is passed through the washer bottle A where concentrated sulfuric acid is kept, which is a drying agent. Here only concentrated sulfuric acid is used as a drying agent. Though there are many other drying agents. And it, the gas gets dried and passes through the another delivery tube into a gas jar, which is empty. Means it is filled with air. 
So you can see the gas shells kept upright. That means gas is collected by the upward displacement of air. The air from the gas jar is displaced once the gas enters because hydrogen chloride gas is heavier than air. So the reaction is sodium chloride, that is the rock salt, reacts with concentrated sulfuric acid when heated to below 200 degrees Celsius, sodium bisulfate and hydrogen chloride gas is formed. Suppose in case if it is heated about 200 degrees Celsius, then you get sodium sulfate and hydrogen chloride gas. Here instead of sodium bisulfate, sodium sulfate is formed. This is an acid salt, this is a normal salt. But we have concern only in the preparation of hydrogen chloride gas. So we should heat it only below 200 degrees Celsius. The reasons why it should not be heated above, we'll learn. Now why only sodium chloride is used, not many other metallic chloride? Because it is cheap and easily available. Now only concentrated sulfuric acid is used, not concentrated nitric acid. The reason is concentrated sulfuric acid is non-volatile and has high boiling point. These are the two keywords. It can displace volatile acid that is hydrogen chloride from sodium chloride. You can see the equation from sodium chloride, hydrogen chloride gas is evolved. So what is non-volatile? It does not vaporize. Whereas HCl is a volatile gas. So therefore concentrated sulfuric acid is non-volatile. Therefore it is used to prepare hydrogen chloride gas which is volatile gas. Why concentrated nitric acid is not used? Because it is volatile. That means it vaporizes along with hydrogen chloride gas and may volatize along with HCl gas. So that's the reason why concentrated nitric acid is not used. Now, why the temperature is maintained below 200? Temperature is maintained around 200 degrees Celsius because above 200 degrees, the fuel is wasted. One reason. Second reason, the apparatus may tend to crack. And the third reason, sodium sulfate formed forms a hard crust and sticks to the glass apparatus. So the glass apparatus may break. So these are three reasons why the temperature is maintained below 200 degrees Celsius. Then purification of the gas form. The hydrogen chloride gas is passed through washer bottle A containing concentrated sulfuric acid because the gas does not react with concentrated sulfuric acid. It only dries the gas. A drying agent should not react with the gas. It should only dry the gas. Therefore, concentrated sulfuric acid is used. Now, what are the other drying agents? Like calcium oxide and phosphorus pentoxide are also drying agents, but cannot be used for drying HCl gas because it reacts with these two. That is calcium oxide and phosphorus pentoxide. Calcium oxide is a base. Reacts with an acid, hydrogen chloride gas, to form calcium chloride and water. Acid plus base giving salt and water. So you will not get hydrogen chloride gas. Hence it reacts with the drying agent. So calcium oxide cannot be used. The next drying agent is phosphorus pentoxide. So when you pass hydrogen chloride gas through phosphorus pentoxide, it also reacts with it to form phosphorus oxychloride and metaphosphoric acid. So you get two new products being formed. Hydrogen chloride cannot be retained. So therefore, we cannot use phosphorus pentoxide also as a drying agent. Collection of the gas. Hydrogen chloride gas is collected by the upward displacement of air, which you saw in the diagram. Why? Because it is 1.28 times heavier than air. Vapor density of HCl is 18.25 and that of air is 14.4. And just remember the value of vapor density HCl, how to calculate will be learning in the next chapter. Then hydrogen chloride gas is not collected over water. Why? Because it is highly soluble in water. One volume of water can dissolve around 452 volumes of hydrogen chloride gas at ordinary temperature. So these are two reasons why it is not, one is not collected by Water, the other reason is upward displacement of air because it is heavier than air. So remember both the reasons. Then physical properties of hydrogen chloride gas. It's a colorless gas having a pungent choking odor. It is sought to taste, non-poisonous, but if inhaled, it causes burning sensation. 
density already I told you it is 1.28 times heavier than air. Solubility also you have learned it is highly soluble in water. You can see the diagram. A dry gas jar filled with dry HCl gas. Then an empty gas jar in which is placed a burning candle. So if you take blue litmus solution along with the candle, then you can see the change in color also once the experiment is done. Now what is done now? HCl gas from the dry gas jar is poured into the lower jar containing the burning candle. Now what do you observe? HCl gas being heavier, it moves down, displaces the air from the lower jar and the, band, and the candle is extinguished. And the solution, blue litmus solution turns red. So what does it indicate? Indicates that HCl gas is heavier than air and the solution turning from blue to red indicates it is acidic. The next experiment is to prove that it is highly soluble in water. It's called as fountain experiment. It is one of the important experiments in this chapter. So what is done here? Dry round bottom flask it is filled with hydrogen chloride gas. And then the mouth of the flask has a rubber stop, stopper with two holes. Through one of the holes a dropper is introduced filled with water. Through the other hole is the jet tube. So how it is done? HCl gas is present in the flask and the dropper is squeezed. When you squeeze it, the water from the dropper enters into the round bottom flask and dissolves the hydrogen chloride gas creating a partial vacuum in the flask. So what happens? The outside pressure is higher which pushes the blue litmus solution which is taken in this trough. And then once it enters inside because hydrogen chloride gas is present, it turns into red fountain. So this shows that Hydrogen chloride gas is highly soluble in water and also it is acidic in nature. The next is chemical properties of hydrogen chloride gas. It is non-combustible and a non-supporter of combustion. That means it does not burn by itself nor it does not help anything to burn in its atmosphere. Then action of indicators. Blue litmus turns red. Either it is a paper or a solution turns red, moist blue titmus. Then methyl orange, which is orange in color, turns pink. Phenophthalene is colorless, remains colorless. If you want to see a change in the color of phenophthalene, then make the phenophthalene alkaline by adding a few drops of any alkali like sodium hydroxide. Phenophthalene becomes pink in color. Now, when you add, when you pass the gas through it, it turns colorless, pink to colorless. That is, alkaline phenophthalene turns from pink to colorless. But only phenolphthalein is colorless, remains colorless with an acid. Then very important reaction is thermal dissociation of hydrogen chloride gas. What is thermal dissociation? It is a reversible thermal decomposition reaction. A decomposition reaction, if it is reversible, then we call it as dissociation reaction. So hydrogen chloride gas, when heated to 500 degree, above 500 degree Celsius, it decomposes to give hydrogen and chlorine. This also shows that HCl contains hydrogen and chlorine. Then reaction of hydrogen chloride gas with ammonia. It combines with ammonia gas to form white dense fumes of ammonium chloride. Here very important, ammonia is a basic gas, hydrogen chloride is an acidic gas. Two gases combine to form a white solid, that is soda, uh, ammonium chloride which gives white dense fumes when it combines and then it settles to form a solid. So very important question, basic gas combines with an acidic gas to form a white solid. So identify the basic gas and the acidic gas and the solid forms, question normally asked. Then the other chemical properties, metals like zinc, magnesium, calcium and iron when heated with hydrogen chloride gas forms respective metal chlorides and hydrogen. So the same reaction we will study in hydrochloric acid also. Now we are studying with hydrogen chloride gas. So example taken are zinc, magnesium and iron. Zinc, when heated zinc and hydrogen chloride gas is passed over it, you get zinc chloride and hydrogen. The gas evolved as hydrogen. 
Similarly, magnesium reacts with hydrogen chloride gas for magnesium chloride and hydrogen. Now, iron reacts with hydrogen chloride to form iron 2 chloride and hydrogen. Here you have to make a note. Iron has variable valency. It has 2 plus and 3 plus. So, which chloride will be formed? It is always when metal combined with an acid or acid gas, it forms a lower chloride. Here the lower chloride is FeCl2. If notes, if the metal can form two chlorides, that is FeCl2 and FeCl3, usually the lower chloride is formed with hydrochloric acid or hydrogen chloride gas. Example, as in the case of iron, you can see it has two variable valences, Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus, but the product formed is FeCl3. This is very, very important to make a note of it.